5 on hormonal and nervous communication. These are the learning outcomes. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to identify three different types of hormone classes, compare the mechanism of hormones, identify the endocrine glands and describe the actions of hormones, describe the structure of neurons, describe the processes involved in neural signaling, explain how a neuron transmits impulse, and the last one to compare endocrine with the nervous system function. And let's look at the chapter overview. On this chapter of cellular communications, you are going to learn on the classes of hormones, the mechanism of actions for the hormone, signal transduction and endocrine gland. That is the part on the endocrine system. And you also will learn on the structure of a neuron, what are the types of neuron, on the process in neural signaling, how to how neuron transmit impulse, neurotransmitter, and the last one, comparison between endocrine and the nervous system. Cellular communication is a communication between cells. Just like us, cells do communicate. They can detect what's going on around them. They can respond to their neighbor, to the environment, and sending back messages. There are two basic systems for communications and regulation. The first is chemical signaling by hormone, which is the functions of endocrine system. And other major communication and control system is network of a neuron that transmits signal, which is the functions of nervous system. Because signaling by neuron can also regulate the release of hormone, the nervous and endocrine often overlap in function. Of course, we are wondering, why do cells need to communicate and how they do it? Cells must communicate with one another to coordinate the activities of organism as a whole. As an example, nerve cells must communicate with muscle cells to create movement. Another example that we have discussed in the previous chapter like regulation uh, of kidney functions where hypothalamus and pituitary gland tells or instruct collecting drug in the kidney to increase permeability by sending antidiuretic hormone as their messages. Now, how do cells communicate? When we communicate, one person sends the message while another receives the message. So do the cells. One cell that sends a signal is a signaling cell and another that receives the signal is a target cell. Cells typically communicate using a chemical signals or chemical messenger that can be proteins or other molecules. Hormone is one type of chemical signal. It means to excite. It is secreted and circulate throughout the body and stimulates specific cells by binding to the receptor of a target cell. Neurotransmitter is also another type of chemical messenger. However, not all cells can hear a particular message or receive the message. Only those that have the compatible receptor, this, this structure, can bind to the hormone specifically and execute the response, while those cells that lack the receptors are unaffected. There are diverse ways that cells use chemical signals to communicate. It is classified by two criteria, type of secreting cells and the route taken by the signal to reach target cell. The first type is autocrine signaling, where the signaling cell sends a signal to itself. So the term auto here is a prefix for self and crin is a suffix for secret. So here the secreted molecule diffuse locally, okay, the red colored here, and bind to the receptor on its own surface and execute an appropriate response. So the cell here is both secreting and target cells. So this type of signaling often occur during early 
development of an organism to ensure that cells develop into the correct tissue and take on proper function. Second type is paracrine signaling. Para here means close to. So it's a suffix, it's a prefix yeah, for close to. So here the secreted molecule diffuses locally and then trigger a response in the neighboring cell. So as you can see here, there are two types of cells, A and B, with the different types of a receptor on its membrane. And this molecule, the signaling molecule, now can bind to cell B. So only the cell B can provide the response. So remember, only those that have the receptor are able to execute and provide the response. They can respond to the signaling molecule. So here the target cell is near the secreting cell. The third is endocrine signaling. When cells need to transmit signals over long distance, they often use circulatory system as distribution network. So here the secreted molecules or the hormone released by endocrine cells into extracellular fluid and travel via bloodstream. So the target cells can be anywhere in the body, but only those that can bind specifically to this hormone are able to execute the response. So in the body, many endocrine cells are located in endocrine glands, such as the thyroid gland, the hypothalamus, and pituitary gland. So one example that we have learned previously is on follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH, released by anterior pituitary glands in the brain that travel down to the gonads via blood. So next is synaptic signaling. This is when neurons communicate with target cells, so it can be other neurons or the muscle cell. So the secreted molecule that we call as a neurotransmitter that released by the neuron diffuse across the synapse and trigger response in the target cells. And the last type is neuroendocrine signaling. So neuroendocrine cells are nerve cells, we call as neurosecretory cells that release neurohormone. This neurohormone then travel into the bloodstream to reach the target cells. So the target cells, yeah, those that can bind specifically to the neurohormone, then trigger a response or provide the response. So example of neuroendocrine cell is the cells of adrenal medulla, which release epinephrine to the blood. So the epinephrine that released by the adrenal gland is a type of neurohormone. So this is almost similar to endocrine signaling where the chemical signals travel via the blood to reach the target cells, but the difference is on the type of secreting cells. So endocrine released by endocrine cells and neuroendocrine signaling release a neurohormone by the nerve cells. Now let's look at classes of hormones. Hormone falls into three major classes, polypeptide, ermines and steroid. Polypeptide compose chains of amino acid and it is a water-soluble hormone. Example is insulin. The second one, amines. This is a type of hormone manufactured by enzymatic modifications of specific amino acid. Most of the amines are hormones are water-soluble and some are lipid-soluble. Example of a water-soluble amines hormone is epinephrine and lipid soluble uh, amines is thyroxine. And the third classes is a steroid. It is a hormone, yeah, the type of lipids manufactured by enzymatic modifications of cholesterol. It contains four fused carbon rings and it is a lipid soluble hormone. Example is a cortisol.